feel numb Hey everyone, welcome to MT Guitar. Today we're doing This Must Be The Place, parentheses, Naive Melody, by Talking Heads. Uh, such an interesting uh, band. I, it's one of my favorite bands ever. They were really influential. They really, you know, dove deep into African music and, and grooves and were deeply inspired by Fela Kuti. Before we learn this song and talk about the riffs, I'm going to show you all the guitar parts and synth parts, which are, are really fun and really good for your rhythm and timing. Um, but before we do that, let's talk about this album, which was um, Speaking in Tongues. It was the fifth album, I believe, and released in 1982 or 1983. They split from Brian Eno and self-produced this album. So Brian Eno had produced uh, their albums throughout the late 70s and early 80s. You know, they were involved in the new wave scene. They were using a lot of polyrhythms and funk rhythms from Africa, inspired by Fela Kuti. And they kind of decided to go a more simplistic approach on this album. And they were messing around a lot with loops and parts, right? So this song just features three chords. So it's very simple. But Talking Heads just really uh, came to life in the studio. They had all these cool uh, parts and textures that worked together. If you've heard, you know, Talking Heads, you know, you may know the hits like Once in a Lifetime. It's like, what are even the chords of that song, right? I mean, it's just like, there's sounds going in and out uh, with synthesizer loops and stuff. So really interesting band and in how they worked in the studio. What I love about this song also is that uh, this was a love song. David Byrne was quite clear about that. But he said that basically he didn't want to do a cliche love song. He had never really written a love song and that he wanted to do it sort of differently. You know, Byrne is a, is a master artist. So so really the, the love song, if you watch the Stop Making Sense documentary uh, film he's really singing to a lamp right to a lamp and then he kind of dances with it and even kisses it and it's just so David Byrne and Talking Heads I love it um, you know just just the right amount of uh, of humor and sort of you know taking this love song cliche and, and moving it to another another world right um, so kind of fun to appreciate Talking Heads and David Byrne and where they were um, I'm a huge fan of his solo career, too, so you might want to check out some David Byrne solo stuff. And if you haven't watched Stop Making Sense, you should watch it. It's incredible. Okay. So, we have two, uh, three chords. But I'm going to show you how to loop this, all right? It's really fun. I, I decided to use my, uh, my hollow body guitar uh, because, you know, they're using electric guitars on this. But I wanted to demonstrate this with an acoustic just so you can see how simple it is to play this song. Down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, on D, E minor, C, E minor. And the reason uh, they called it Naive Melody is because of the music. They said that in interviews that, well, it was just three chords and they all switched instruments. So the bass player, uh, Tina Weymouth, um, not sure if I'm pronouncing her name correctly, she played guitar and, and then the the drummer played synthesizer or something, right? They were playing. They were playing different instruments. So, so there is no strumming guitar on this, but this would be the closest to mimicking the bass, which is okay. And the guitar parts are that's one of them right there. So that would be uh, eighth and seventh fret first two strings down to third fret first two strings. Same string pattern, down, up, up, down, up. But I'm doing all downs. It just sounds a little better to me, but you can do down, up, too. Okay, so then five, five, then back to seven and eight. Then five and five, and then eight and seven to repeat the pattern. So the whole pattern would be. Okay, and then it repeats. So. That's happening. We're going to loop that in a sec, along with the chords. Then the synth part comes in. 
right? So let's just learn these here together. And what we'll do is in a few minutes, we'll loop everything together and I'll sort of give you some tips on how you can play this all on a looper by yourself if you don't want to just strum the chords, right? Because you could just play the whole song like this and sing it. And if you are going to sing it, I would recommend that because it's going to be hard to sing while you're doing all these parts. So, 12th and 10th frets, first set two strings. And you're going to go down. And all these parts are kind of staccato, meaning short, 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 short. Okay? Now I'm accomplishing that by lifting my, my ring and index fingers. Okay, so four times. Now we start to do a hammer on to the 12th fret first string. Three times. Then go down to 10 and 8. So that'll be four times. Now three hammer ons. Now down again. Now down a whole step. And then do a little side step. Go down a fret and back up a fret. So the whole thing would be. Uh. Again. Third time. Now the changes. Three times there. Four times on eight and seven. Fifth time. Hold it. Now nine and eight. Twice. Seven and ten once. So that would be. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, long. Da, da, da. Now, slight variation on that. Twice there, three times, twice, and then long. Same ending, nine and eight, seven and ten. So that'll be. Okay, now this part. You know, it's a long intro. The intro is a minute long, so the vocals don't even start until all this happens. So it's super fun to learn this stuff. So it would be eight and seven, three times, fourth time, hammer on to eighth fret. And then three times eight and eight, pull out. Okay. And then you land there, nine and eight. And then this will all be tabbed out on the Patreon, by the way, so you can check that out, my arrangement of it. And then one more time. And then. Okay. So then the. I guess David Byrne played this part. This would be 15th fret. We're not. We, we, you could bend it. But it, it's a little tricky because um, of the rhythm of it. So I would just do slides for now and you can add the bends later. But it would be 15 side step down so that means slide a fret down and back up 14th fret third string on the landing now first string and land on the second string 15th fret uh. now 14th fret third string three times one two three sorry four times land on 12th fret so, kind of a strange melody, right? Then you repeat everything. By this time you go faster. So it's second string, first string, second string, third string, and now the same thing as before. Home. Where I wanna be, but I guess I'm all right. So, this whole song is a great lesson in rhythm. Let's loop this now. I'm gonna start with the chord progression, then that. Then the synth part, okay? Three, four. Oh, it'd help if I turn the guitar on. <laughs> the volume. Three, four. Okay. All right, pretty good. Now we'll, so that's the chord progression. Now we're gonna loop this part on top of it. Two, three, four. Now I'm going to turn off the looper. Wait, uh, turn that off. I'll turn off the looper as far as the overdub function and just play over it the synth melody. Here we go.
again. Totally fun to do. That'll work your rhythm because that's actually pretty tough to do with the muting and the rhythm of it. Um, and to get this locked in with a looper is a good exercise. So, sort of to put ourselves in the in the places of Talking Heads being in the studio, thinking, okay, we've got three chords, but can we can we make some memorable parts? Can we make it all work together? And can we do it all in good in good rhythm and groove? Okay, now when the verse comes in, we have a new part here. It's, it's, it's fairly African sounding, right? It's kind of like an African guitar groove. Um, so that would be a hammer on the third fret, second string, first string, twice. Then fifth fret, and then one, two, three, four, five, and then five, three, oh. So it's uh, hammer, 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 five, one, two, three, four, five, six, da da. Repeat. This time, third fret. Open the third fret, second string. So the whole thing would be uh. With the groove, it sounds like this. Three, four. Home. Where I want to be, I guess I'm already there. Right? Okay, so that's the that's the verse. Uh, so you might not want to loop that though because then once it's on a looper it's it's recorded and it's not happening during the chorus so you might just loop it uh, and then undo it or just play it uh, for practice now when the chorus comes in um, and I'm standing uh, right and actually if you see uh, if you see the the live version the bass player, Tina, is playing it all the way up here, but I kind of like it here, so I'm just going to do it here. You're welcome to do it there, 12, 12, fourth and third strings, but I'm doing it three, three, first and second strings, and I'm standing, and you're going to do three and two, right? Um, so in the studio it's a synth but in the live version it's a guitar so it works for both obviously so we're gonna do three and two and then three three open three three five five three oh three so and i'm standing repeat got a place with you repeat where last time? Mm. Okay, and it just keeps going throughout the whole melody. Love me till my heart stops. So, that would sound like this. Three, four. Uh, one, two, three, four. sing. Okay. And after that, after the chorus, it just goes back to the main riff. Alright, it wouldn't be a, a looping lesson if I didn't sort of talk about how to, how to create your own parts off this. Well, one thing you can do is just have a solo on it. So, we're in E minor, okay, relative minor of G major. So you could play your E minor or G major scales. I can play the melody. Uh,
melody of the chorus. Basically, when you have such a simple song, it's deceivingly simple because there's all these amazing parts, but it's just three chords that repeat. It's called an ostinato throughout the whole song. Well, you have an opportunity to kind of uh, flesh out some scales because the chords aren't really changing, you know, apart from the diatonic key, the minor. So, uh, you know, you have a chance to sort of use this to your advantage, have fun with this. I could put this loop on for 10 minutes and just warm up on E minor. It's a great thing to do. Even if the only one you know is this open E minor. You know. But, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter if you play all up and down the fretboard. You just want to work your scales over a song like this. So I hope that makes sense. Check out the, the Patreon for you know, for some tabs and stuff. And uh, remember to subscribe, hit the bell icon. Hope you enjoyed this lesson. I had a fun time putting together that demo. It was surprising how, how long it took. <laughs> so hopefully you enjoyed that. Stick around for the next lesson. And uh, looking forward to seeing you then.